Hello! Welcome to Bigfoot Real Encounters. We're glad to have you stop by. We'd also like to take this time to invite you to share your encounter. You can send your stories to the email bfrealencounters at mail.com where we will feature your story with all of the respect that it deserves. So send your stories in bfrealencounters at mail.com. We look forward to hearing from you and your great stories soon. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for coming back to Bigfoot Real Encounters. Today's video, as you've seen by the title, eight signs that you may have had a Bigfoot encounter. This kind of goes hand in hand with one of my more popular videos. Will I ever see a Bigfoot? I'll leave a link here in the, the card above for you to check out. These two kind of go hand in hand. A lot of people will have some experiences and then later on in life hear a story of somebody who relates it either on a, a video like this or some other format and they begin to think back and discover that they may have had a Bigfoot encounter. Well today you know, I'm going to discuss some things to think about that may point to the fact that you may have had a Bigfoot encounter. Okay, so hold on to your hats. Here we go. Number one is the most obvious. You see it. There he is. Big as life. And uh, that's the uh, most obvious, unmistakable terrifying usually from the stories that we've heard once in a while it's not but it's usually very quite terrifying and there he is a large human form usually human face not an ape face like some would have you believe the native americans had described them as another tribe of people large people and hunters have had them in their scopes, could not pull the trigger because they were not sure if they were about to shoot a person or an animal. The hair throws you off. That's the biggest thing. It's the long hair all over the body that throws you off. So there he is. You see it. You know you've had a Bigfoot encounter. And the other type of uh, visual sighting could be a shadowy figure in the forest. That's most of the type of what you see rather than a very blatant, right out in the open there he is. You can see a shadowy figure moving, a large one usually, but they do come in all sizes. Remember, these beings at one point are young. At some point, they're two feet tall. At some point, they're four feet tall. Okay? you got to keep that in mind. They go through all the stages of growing up and pass all the different sizes. Just like we do. All right? Keep that in mind. So, what you need to watch out for, obviously, is the long hair. And odd proportions. Their proportions of their limbs are different than human proportions. That's your first clue. The behavior is another clue. So shadowy figures is the second type of a visual which is most common. And uh, the other visual type of sighting is usually glowing red eyes or eye shine is not to be confused with other animals which are reflective eye shine. You, you know, like you see them light up in your headlights. What is usually reported is this eye shine is generated by itself. And the other thing is that the, from one eye to the next has a large space in between. The eyes are not close together. 
like, say, an owl would be, or a fox, or a raccoon. And the eyes, the glowing part of the eyes, the red dots, or whatever you want to call them, are larger than what would be from an owl, or a fox, or any other type of creature. They are larger around in diameter, and they are farther apart. So that is uh, three types of visual sighting. As you see it, blatant out in the open, there he is. Another type is a shadowy figure type of, uh, of sight. And uh, the other one is the glowing eyes. A visual sighting could happen alongside of a road, which happens a lot. It's most of the sightings occur along a roadside. Many others are when a person is in a forest. And there are some, when people are in their houses, they will see a face looking at them in the window. Very startling, very scary. And many times, it is in a second floor window, which makes it even more dramatic. So, no, sign number one that you may have had a Bigfoot encounter is you see it. So if you have seen one, please make sure that you drop a comment down below. Share it with everybody. Okay, number two on our eight signs that you may have had a Bigfoot encounter are the footprints. This is another quite obvious sign. Now the footprints that we normally think of are going to be barefoot, human looking, and extremely large, pressed way down into the earth. But, as I just mentioned, we have to remember that these creatures come in all sizes. Small, large, medium, there are many different sizes. And they, they run the gamut. They start out small and they grow bigger. So these footprints can be of um, every size in between. What you want to look out for is uh, the distinct shape of the foot. They're wide and flat. They don't have a high arch which would show part of the foot missing type like a human. And also, what you would want to look out for is the distance between the footprints, the stride. The other thing is the type of stride that's available. This is assuming that you find more than one footprint, which is one of the best indicators. If you find just one, it's a lot more difficult. But if you find a string of footprints, they are very different from... A human stride which is I'm not sure how to, to, to describe those but the suspected genuine Sasquatch trail of footprints is in line one in front of the other as if the Sasquatch were trying to walk the line as they say like if an officer pulls somebody over for a sobriety test and has him put one foot in front of the other on the white line along the road. But of course, not toe to heel. I mean, the distance is usually greater than that which a human can take, but you can tell the difference between the left and right by the placement of the toe, and they are in line. Not staggered, that was the word that I was looking for earlier, staggered. Like a human walks, with one foot out to the right and angled to the right, then the left goes out to the left a little bit and angled, pointing out to the left. That's how we walk. These creatures walk differently than we do. So you're going to want to look for that. And of course, these creatures seem to be more dense and heavier than we are. So the footprint uh, normally will be deeper in the earth than what we can produce. So these are very obvious, and you can see from the photos 
uh, the one large footprint is uh, pushing down into the earth pretty dramatically. And then the casts of the other footprints that are were shown, they're very differently. The one looks injured. These are famous casts. They have been featured on many television shows. It shows the left footprint having uh, like a broken bone or maybe bone spurs or some other abnormality like that. But the footprints are actually some of the best physical evidence around. And if you have uh, any level of skill, you can tell whether a footprint is fresh or not or if it is an older print, but nonetheless, it is a type of Bigfoot encounter, and that is number two on the list. Number three is a little more in-depth as it covers sounds that you may hear, and uh, one of the sounds that you're having a Bigfoot encounter would be heavy footsteps, somebody walking, and you can tell that it is one step after the other rather than multiple steps as in a four-legged creature. I myself have had that type of encounter where I have heard the, the stepping behind me. I've already uh, let you folks hear that encounter on one of my other videos and it was quite unnerving uh, to say the least. That also involved the breaking and cracking of branches, which is another one of the sounds that could indicate that you're having a Bigfoot encounter because uh, some of the sounds of the cracking of branches is very loud and you could tell that it is a significant branch that is being broken and or twisted around. And uh, these things do indicate, or may indicate, I should say, that there is a encounter taking place at the time. Now, another one of the sounds that comes along with a Bigfoot encounter would be the hearing of a voice. You can hear talking or chattering as it's described, and like they're talking in the distance, but you cannot understand the words which are being spoken. Some have described it like children playing, laughing, and talking amongst each other, but you can't make out the words. The other type of voice type of thing would be howls. But you can tell that it's not canine howls, which would be like a coyote or a wolf. It almost sounds like it, but you can tell that it's a um, humanoid type of voice behind it and you could hear like a man yell within the howl which I've also heard that while on a trip in West Virginia and it is a it's different but it is a type of a voice indicating that this is some type of a Bigfoot encounter possibly happening now the other type of a sound would be grunts and growls which may be heard, people have described these when they approach thick brush. They would, uh, it, it usually accompanies some of the other sounds, maybe the footsteps or the branches breaking, and uh, they decide to investigate a couple steps in the direction and they would be growled at or grunts. Those are also some things, along with the sounds that could take place. Now, the other sound that I have heard in other encounters and read online and in some books about encounters is the sound of something tearing through the woods. That, uh, they usually describe it as a bulldozer going through the woods. Some have described it like a elephant running through the woods, just knocking trees over and crunching up the, the uh, underbrush and everything. And I like to think in my mind like the old cartoon of the Tasmanian Devil coming through the woods. And it makes you wonder where they came up with the idea for that cartoon character, doesn't it? 
But uh, that is another one of the sounds that may indicate that you're having a Bigfoot encounter. And keep in mind that all of these things can be or may be something other than a Bigfoot encounter. But the one key thing is if these sounds occur and they're a little bit off, a little bit strange, in your mind you're thinking, that was odd. I've heard similar things, but not quite like that. That was just weird. And you can't really attribute it to something natural, something other than uh, the possibility of being a Bigfoot encounter. These are all things that you want to keep in mind. And of course, many of these things are subjective, and they tie in to other occurrences with it. Another sound uh, that is very, uh, I guess, kind of famous that many people have seen on uh, television shows is the tree knocking. Yes, uh, we see people out in the middle of the night banging on trees trying to get a response from Bigfoot. I don't really recommend doing this because nobody really knows what that means to the Bigfoot. What if it means dinner? Come and get it. <laughs> what if it means screw you? I mean, you don't know what you're saying to them. It could be a big mistake. But there are recordings of these knocking sounds off in the distance in the woods that don't have an explanation to them. So this is another sound that you should be aware of when you hear them. And another sound is a house slap. Now this uh, is something that when I was young occurred more than once. When I was young there was a movie Poltergeist that came out during the 1970s and my parents watched it. And there was a poltergeist named Patrick. I think that's the movie that this came from. But uh, it was a, a show about a poltergeist named Patrick. I'm not sure if it was the movie Poltergeist or not. I better clarify that. And when the, we would hear the house being slapped, my mother would giggle and say, oh, that's just Patrick. But the house would get slapped from, from time to time, and we would wonder what that was. And throughout the years, there have been small incidences around the house, which collectively makes me think that there is some activity around that property, which my dad and sister still live there. Someday I may go into some of the stories around that. But yes, house slaps is another sound that is often attributed to Bigfoot encounters. If you folks have seen or heard any of these things that have been discussed, or it could be something different that uh, you're not sure about, please uh, leave a comment below or share your encounters by emailing bfrealencounters at mail.com. Share your stories. We'll be sure to feature your story if you wish. But the important thing is to get as many of these stories and encounters into the public realm as possible. These things seem to be getting covered up. Now, I'm pretty sure, as well as most of you are, that our governments know that these beings exist. And for some reason, they're not letting us know what they know. And that could present a danger. There are people that go missing. David Politis, Missing 411. Many of you have heard these. I have heard some stories. He's got great books. And you can find his books on Amazon. I'll be sure and put a link below. You can check those out. But anyway, we need to get the word around and share these encounters so that other folks come forward with their encounters. We can share these among each other and share our knowledge of these beings 
and increase our knowledge among ourselves so that when we go into the forest or if these forest beings come to us and look into our windows or whatnot, we're ready for them. We're not as surprised. Sure, it's going to be startling. But we have an idea that they do exist and how to handle it when they do come around. So share your encounters. Please comment below. Send them in. BF Real Encounters at mail.com. All right, then. Number four on the signs that you may have had a Bigfoot encounter is the smells. Many of us have heard about the horrible smell that sometimes accompanies Bigfoot encounters. But not all the time. I've heard stories where they said there was no smell. But once again, many times there is a smell, and it is described as terrible. Some folks have reported that they have thrown up at the smell. It, it is so bad. It reminds them of rotted meat combined with bad B.O. and urine and, yes, poop. <laughs> yes, I said it. I said the word poop. Okay, it's gone around nationwide now. But the, the smell is terrible. And I'm sorry I don't have a, a visual that I could put up to represent smells, but there it is for you, folks. Uh, the smells are bad. And many times they accompany all of the above. The visual, the sounds, and then there are smells that go along with that. And uh, b keep in mind when these things happen that there could be the presence of these beings in your area, and you need to be aware of this. Keep your kids close. And if you get the feeling that you need to leave, well then uh, certainly, with all these things occurring, uh, do what your gut says. Leave if you need to. Now number five among the signs that you may have had a Bigfoot encounter is tree twists or broken trees or tree arches or tree structures in the forest. These, I have come across them. You do have to be careful with these because uh, sometimes people stack tree branches up into different uh, forms and structures for lean-tos and whatnot. So you have to use your reasoning on these, and it should be, if you're going to try and attribute it to Bigfoot activity, uh, somewhere out where there's not a lot of human activity, or something that uh, would not be possible, like the size of the branches. I mean, or, or maybe it's, it's tree trunks. Just the sheer size of it, or I've even seen cut logs or branches from a well-kept trail that were placed high up in the crux of uh, another living tree after they had been cut. Now the thing is, these were like a half a dozen or maybe six, seven, or eight, which were placed up in the, the Y of a tree, eight to 10 to 12 feet off the ground. And each of these uh, branches, so to speak, were maybe 15 feet long, six, seven, eight inches in diameter. Now, it is not likely that these were picked up by a human and stuffed in this tree. Therefore, I, in my mind, say, well, this is probably not humans that did this. And given with other things that I have seen in this area and sounds that I have heard, I concluded it is likely that this was Sasquatch. The next thing on the list, the, which is number six, is rock throwing or stones or sometimes sticks. It has been reported folks out enjoying the outdoors, whether camping or fishing or hunting or uh, out on a boat or hiking, that uh, things have been thrown at them. Rocks, stones, branches. And there seems to be no explanation for this because there's nobody around these uh, objects being thrown are coming in at uh, quite the speed. So it seems like there's no real explanation for it other than a possible Sasquatch. Because 
birds aren't going to be able to throw an object. It takes hands to do these type of things. So uh, be careful if you're out there doing whatever and things start flying your way. Maybe you're about to have a Bigfoot encounter. Now, number seven of the eight uh, seems to be one of the more profound signs of a Bigfoot encounter, and that is feelings, or your sixth sense. Uh, this is something that is reported very often. You, people get the feeling of being watched, as well as uh, the extreme dread or fear overcomes them. You get the strong urge to flee. The hair stand up on the on end on the back of your neck and you get goosebumps. These type of things really impact people and have a lasting effect. There have been reports of veterans from the armed services who have uh, suffered from the feelings that they get while encountering the smells and the sounds and sometimes the sights and or things being thrown at them. While experiencing these, they get these intense feelings that were even more intense while, than while they were in combat. And it affects their sleep. They actually have a form of PTSD from this. All because they were never told that these things were real, were out there, and could cause this. This is why we need to share your stories Get this information out to as many people as we can because the officials are certainly not going to do that. The forestry services are denying it. The park services are denying it. Other government officials are denying it. Now, there are some, a few, local legislatures that have placed Sasquatches on an endangered species list or you're not allowed to hunt or kill them. Some places, right now, I think Missouri is uh, putting a hunting season on them, which is rather foolish given the size of these things and their reported resistance to weapons. I mean, the hunters could become the hunted. But anyways, we need to get the word out on these things. These feelings in sixth sense and other things that accompany an encounter with a Sasquatch are some of the most profound, long-lasting effects of an encounter which need to be taken seriously. And foreknowledge of these creatures' existence can help prepare you so that you are not psychologically injured should you come face-to-face with one of these encounters on any of these different types of interactions that we've previously discussed. This is very important. So if you have had some form of an encounter, you need to share that story. Don't be afraid of being laughed at. You will not be laughed at on this channel. I can guarantee that. And if folks get rough with you in the comments, they will be blocked because this information needs to get out. It's very important. Folks have been injured psychologically over this, especially children. We need to pass the word along amongst ourselves so that we can psychologically prepare ourselves so that we can handle an interaction if it becomes necessary that we, we run into one of these things. We have an idea what to do and we are prepared. And our children know what to do. We have people go missing. And this is, uh, we don't know. We don't know whether these beings are doing it or not. There have been cases where Sasquatches have helped people. And this is very uh, wonderful stories, heartwarming stories. But there have been cases where they have charged people, screamed at people, and most of the time the, the effects of encounters are, are just simply terrifying. They cause nightmares, as well as other things. The feelings are long-lasting. Folks need therapy. So we need to get the word out about these things so as many people are prepared as possible. 
I encourage you all to visit Steve Isdall's channel, The Facts by How to Hunt. Steve is a very, very active in uh, getting the stories out and uh, raising awareness on these things. He reads a lot of emails of people having encounters and uh, dealing with a lot of these issues that we just uh, spoke about. So visit Steve's channel, The Facts by How to Hunt .com, and I'm sure you'll enjoy that. Number eight on our eight signs uh, that you may have had a Bigfoot encounter is our children. Now, folks, listen to me about this. These creatures have been reportedly seen watching children, watching children play. They peek around trees at them. Children have reported them looking at them in their window at night in their bedroom. We need to listen to our children when they say there's a strange person following us home in the edge of the woods. Somebody's peeking at me but from behind the tree. There's somebody outside my window keeps looking in at me. I can hear him breathing hard and his eyes are glowing. When our children say things like these, we need to pay attention. Okay, maybe it's not a Bigfoot. Yeah, I'm a Bigfoot guy. And people say, oh, you think everything's Bigfoot. Yeah, maybe I go overboard sometimes. But listen, when we're dealing with our children and they bring these stories to us, we had better listen to them because if it's not Bigfoot, and it's probably not, what if it's worse than a Bigfoot? Another human being. We know bad things happen to children. We know there are terrible people on this earth. If the children say somebody is following them home along a wooded lot or peeking at them behind a tree or outside the window at night, don't you dare brush them off. You have got to have their back. You are their hero. They come to you with their concerns and their fears. I have heard many stories from many channels of people writing in saying, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, this and this happened. I saw this, heard this, and my parents told me, all your nuts go out and play. It's just your imagination. Go out and play. This cannot happen. Too many children go missing. Too many children are scarred for life. Listen to your children. Take them seriously. Once again, okay, it's not Bigfoot. Maybe it's a human, or maybe it is a Bigfoot. Either way, your children are bringing a fear to you. You had better have their back. That's your primary job. Listen to your children. I guess I got off on a little bit of, on a rant there, but hearing a lot of these stories from other channels kind of gets under my skin a little bit. Uh, I like to keep this a little bit light. Uh, I need the views. Uh, please share these around so that uh, folks listen to us and um, send in their stories. It would really help this channel if you'd place some comments, some shares, some likes. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, especially the comments. I would really love to have some comments any ideas that you may have or suggestions, I'll take it seriously. We'll listen to it. We'll add things in if you want it. We'll leave things out if you don't want them in. Uh, how do you like the format? Uh, any suggestions are welcome. I can take criticism rather easily. And so uh, just bring forth anything that you have for us here. Those are the eight signs you may have had a Bigfoot encounter that I came up with. And uh, please share your stories if you've encountered any of these things. Don't be afraid to send them in. We'll not ridicule you or criticize you. Uh, please check out the links in the description below. We've got some uh, links to some uh, great t-shirts on Amazon and some other items down there. And uh, go right ahead and check them out. I do get a little bit of a earning off of that if you to help this channel if you folks go ahead and buy something on there and it will go in toward helping this channel I would greatly appreciate that 
So hey, if you have any ideas for a video about Bigfoot that you would like to see in the future, hey, place it in the comment or email me, bfrealencounters at mail.com. So until the next video, keep your eyes and ears open and take care of each other. Have a good one. Once again, once again, another great story. Thanks for tuning in. Please share your encounter. Email us, bfrealencounters at mail.com. Your story is very important. We will treat it with the respect that it deserves. Also, be sure to smash the like button, share, and subscribe. Thanks once again. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Watch out for our next video. Maybe we'll feature yours. Have a great day.